Hey everyone. Hey, I'm making some uh, changes to my side rusher today. I'm doing a few little things that are going to make it a little safer and a little more weather resistant. Um, I've been doing a lot of riding in extremely cold weather and uh, I've been concerned about the wind chill on the front of the battery here. And I have noticed uh, in the really cold weather that my battery life isn't quite um, what it is when I'm riding in 50 or 60 degrees. Um, so the first change I'm, or addition I'm going to make on this today is uh, I'm going to add one of these covers here to the front. Um, this is a neoprene cover and it adds a little thermal protection to your battery area. It also keeps uh, water, mud off of this area, which I've, has also been a concern to me. Um, just because uh, I'm worried about water coming up and then running down and getting inside. I've taken the battery off a few times after real wet rides and that hasn't been a problem. Uh, but it, there's always the possibility. So something like this will help with that. Um, this is basically just a little thermal blanket that velcros around your uh, battery and down tube here. Couldn't be easier to put on. Uh, a couple little wrinkles there, but not bad. So that's the first easy thing. That couldn't be any easier. Um, I'm also going to ride with this a little bit in the spring because I anticipate going on some uh, some uh, mountain passes that have some uh, shallow water crossings and all that. And I'm going to uh, rely on this to keep the water away from my battery area here. I'm going to change from a 180 millimeter rotor, that's the diameter of the rotor, um, to a 220. Much bigger rotor, have uh, better stopping power because of that. Um, to do this, you need to take off the front wheel, remove the old rotor, put on the new, and then uh, there is an adapter here. Uh, if you buy an adapter that's a 180 to 220, that will space your caliper out the right distance for the new diameter of the rotor. So this is made by Magura, good quality stuff. Um, this is a little spacer will go between the fork and the caliper. There's already one spacer here, um, but this will replace. This will be in addition to this one. It'll be in front of it and uh, should be a real easy swap and fix and uh, while I'm at it I'm going to deglaze the uh, pads that are in here. I think I've glazed those up pretty well on some of the long downhills. Okay the uh, tool that comes with your bike um, is an allen head. Um, what you need for these are Torx. A Torx bit. Um, these are more of a star pattern. They use a driver like that. Um, this happens to be a number 20 Torx. Um, I loosened these already because they're, they're quite tight. Um, I used it with uh, the bit in my drill here um, just to loosen them up. If you've got a Torx T-handle, that'll work fine. Torx screwdriver like this, um, pretty tough to get these loose because you can't get the leverage that you need. Um, but once you sort of loosen them with your uh, screw gun, um, then you can just spin these out. So nothing difficult about this. And don't be afraid to uh, put a bunch of pressure on it. Those Torx bits can handle, they're designed to handle a huge amount of twisting force. Um, that's what they're really good for. So you get these out. Um, you'll notice that your new rotor came with brand new little silver ones. They always come with these and uh, I'd suggest that you use not reuse the old ones. Um, see how these the old ones used to have used to have some blue thread locker on them. Well that's kind of uh, used up now that they've been put in and removed. So uh, the new screws that come with it have um, brand new blue thread locker on them 
and so once you put them in you know that they're not going to go anywhere pretty important so that they don't back out and cause some damage to your bike um, so this should go right on it does uh, just a shimano pattern and the bolts should be the same as well and they appear to be so I'm going to put one of these all the way in here um, just making sure of the length because these are a little bit longer than what was in there yeah they're fine um, so I'm going to back that out and I'll put in the rest and tighten it up by hand I don't use a screw gun for any sort of tightening I like to um, feel what the screws and bolts are doing um, so I would suggest that you not use uh, power tools to put it back on just use something by hand okay so this has an up arrow on it your little tang here um, will go down um, we'll use the shorter screws here to go through to hold the new adapter in place and I'm noticing that these uh, new screws are Torx, they're not Allen's. They already have the thread locker applied to them, so we're good there. those good and tight don't want anything coming loose here um, you'd probably feel it before it did any damage because your brakes would feel funny but uh, just make sure that uh, you get those good and tight so uh, before I go any further I'm going to pull my uh, brake pads because I'm putting I'm gonna use the uh, used brake pads with the new rotors um, I want to check these pads anyway because um, I've been getting a lot of squeaking it's uh, one of the reasons that I'm um, going to the bigger brakes because um, where I live here there's just a lot of extreme uh, downhill and it's uh, if you're riding on the flats or something these stock brakes are probably going to be great um, but uh, if you're doing a lot of up and down hilly riding um, you may want to upgrade I'm sure gonna give it a shot but I'm gonna pull these pads and uh, see uh, how glazed they are so your pads come out and they look something like this and uh, what you've got is this little metal expander here this is spring-loaded so that they if you're not pushing on them they're trying to um, widen the gap and that stops them from rubbing on your rotor there so these little springs just kind of come off like this and then there are your pads and uh, I've always I've been wanting to pull these um, since I got the bike I can feel a little ridge there so I've worn in a little bit on them um, but I don't know if you can catch that in the light but you'll see uh, there's sort of a sparkliness to the pad um, you see something that looks like copper color in there almost um, that means they're semi-metallic pads they're not organic so that tells me um, what I'm definitely going to do is try to find a pair of pads for these Logan brakes that are 100% uh, organic and I think that'll cut way down on my squeaking uh, metallic pads are, are known to be kind of noisy um, but the next thing I'm going to do here um, I've got a piece of glass over here on the floor that I just brought over and uh, 
I guess I can bring this up by the camera here. So what I'm going to do is I've got one of these, uh, okay, got one of these sanding pads here. Um, just stick that down to your glass. Now you got a super flat surface and just very lightly and with very even pressure just go around that. Um, you can see where it's starting to sand off is the little ridge that had worn in on them. Now we're getting down to the pad itself. And that's pretty much it. That's I'll do one more. But that's pretty much deglazed right there versus that's the clean one versus the glazed one. I think you can see the difference that uh, you don't get the sheen there. And it's a completely different color. So, starting to take it off. Almost there. And that'll do it. Okay, now that uh, metal that's in the pad there is even more obvious. You can see that really shining in the light here. Um, so, um, two things accomplished there. I was able to, to uh, deglaze for the new rotor. And I also found out that uh, I have metallic pads. And I will definitely want to change those out here. As soon as I need new pads, I'm going to go to organic. So I'm going to put these back in. I'm going to put new thread lock on here. Just a little spot. Just get that started. Same thing for this guy. I'm going to loosen this back up. I need everything to be loose and free floating there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the front wheel back on. This little uh, spacer here has got a uh, little knurling on this side here. And I think you can see in the headsets into this. So that is to get a grip on the bottom of your fork here to make sure you can reverse this and um, it wouldn't grip the way it's supposed to. so that went in nicely um, I can see by looking from the front there that uh, things look real good for uh, the right amount of spacing for the new rotor so that's great um, just make sure that this is sitting all the way down in your fork slots there so that it's Oh, you know what I did? I think. Okay, so 
just tightening. So the front wheel's back on, um, the spacer's in, and uh, the caliper's sitting in the right spot, but I haven't tightened anything up yet. Um, everything's loose here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the tool hanging in there so it's ready to go. Uh, but I come up here and I grab this lever and I squeeze. And when I squeeze that, that centers the caliper on that rotor. So while holding in this lever, I'm going to come over here and tighten this up. Don't, don't kill it. I mean, it doesn't have to be overly tight. Just go back and forth a couple of times. Just snugging them up. Once you've got it pretty tight, you can call that good. You got your thread locker on there, so nothing's going to move. So let go of that. And the test for this now is to lift your fork up and see if your rotor drags. And it does not. Everything's nice and smooth and centered. So that job is done. And I think that looks pretty freaking awesome. That's a great looking rotor on this bike. The next thing I'm going to upgrade is my headlight here. Um, these are pretty standard. Come with come on a lot of e-bikes. Um, you'll see this same light uh, or something very similar to it. Um, what I really don't like about this light is the fact that it attaches down here on the unsuspended part of the bike. So by that, I mean, when you hit a bump, this whole part is moving with the bump. Whereas if we attach the light up here where you've already got a couple of holes, um, then when you hit a bump, this is all moving, but this is staying fairly still here. Um, so this is part of the suspended part of the, the uh, bike here versus unsuspended. Um, so when you're riding down with this kind of light, when you're riding down the road at night, you'll see your light is really jiggling around ahead of you. Um, also people that, uh, are, you know, uh, seeing you coming up towards them also see a jiggling light here. Um, that's a dead giveaway that it's a bicycle versus a motorcycle because motorcycle lights are always on the suspended part of the uh, bike here. Um, so I'm going to move. I What I did was get a different kind of light and I'm going to move it up to these two mounts here. And uh, that way, um, when I'm going down a real bumpy road, the headlight will be staying pretty level and pretty uh, even, won't be shaken on me. So uh, for people that are seeing me come up the road, um, I'll look more like a motorcycle than a bicycle. Um, and that's good because these things travel at motorcycle speeds, not bicycle speeds. And sometimes you really surprise people uh, coming up on them fast, especially during the day when they can see you pedaling and then all they go pull out in front of you and all of a sudden you're just right on top of them because you're going way faster than they anticipated. Um, so the, the, uh, little light that I got here is going to put out more light. Um, this, if you, you probably can't see it in this light, but on the back here, it says that it operates at 12 to 100 volts DC. Um, so anything in that range, um, you can get this little light on uh, eBay. That's where I got it. Um, it's super light. It's probably the same weight as the one that's on there. Um, but that's going to mount up here, put out more light, and uh, um, do what we already talked about. So um, what I need to do is make a little bracket for this to mount on to those two holes. And for that, I'm going to use this piece of aluminum angle and uh, make a quick little bracket to mount that. And then I'll have to uh, unplug my wire here 
and splice this wire onto the new light so that I can plug in. Um, this light doesn't come with any sort of end on it, so you got to do a little bit of soldering, a little bit of fixing. Um, the one thing that uh, this light that's on it is a three wire light this is a two wire so i'll have to do a slight modification um, to make the two wire work with the three but it won't be an issue and uh get going on that i soldered up the uh, new wires to the new headlight um, the old headlight was a three wire. That's because uh, the horn is in the back of this. So it's a it's a headlight and horn combination. Um, because of that, it's got three wires versus two. Um, the white wire here is for your horn. So I will no longer have a horn, but that's all right. Because honestly, this horn, I think I was the only one that could hear it. Um, it was pointing backwards and uh, not very loud, so no big loss. So the uh, red and black are for the headlight. Um, the lead that came with the new headlight is a red and black. So you just match those up, red and black, red and black. And uh, solder, use uh, heat shrink tubing. And uh, I usually go ahead and wrap it uh, with a little bit of electrical tape after the heat shrink even just to make sure that no moisture gets in um, so this guy's ready to go I just need to make the mount I'll show you how I made this mount um, it's pretty typical of how I do a lot of fitting on uh, motorcycles and bikes and all that um, to do this you kind of need uh, dirty hands <laughs> dirty hands so um, let me set this up here and uh, what I do is get a piece of paper. Um, you've got the two holes here. Um, you can do this on all sorts of uh, fitting of uh, custom pieces and all that. Just get a piece of paper. Um, my hands are dirty from uh, uh, dealing with my workbench over there and all. So if you're if you got clean hands, go uh, uh, get some grease off of your chain. Get some crud off your chain what you do is just hold that up there you can feel the one hole right there um, rub your dirty hands over that until you end up with two basically what you're doing is taking a tracing off of it now you've got the exact distance for these holes and then uh, from that you can make your pattern what I do is take a hole punch punch out those two holes and then I uh, use a center punch and uh, when I'm making my little piece I will have the correct distance to actually bolt up there. lights on everything's nice and solid got a little bracket here See a little bracket behind there and it's got a bolt underneath that holds everything where it's adjusted so uh, that works nicely let me uh, turn on the bike here well, let's see some of you uh, haven't seen the display yet they're actually really nice on this bike that's the color display right there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of specific to the uh, Psy Rusher here. Uh, I've got, I noticed on some of my videos, I don't hear it when I'm riding, but on some of my videos I hear a rattle. And I was like, what the heck is that? Well, it's the uh, battery release latch here. Um, it's got some play in it, and it, it's rattly. And so... Uh, what I'm going to do is pull this off of here and see if by adding a, it's just got a screw in it. 
holding it onto this post here. Um, and I'm going to see if putting a uh, o-ring underneath it will get rid of that rattle. It's a pretty beefy little latch. It's uh, made out of aluminum. Um, it's heavy and strong, uh, but it's got a got a real rattle there. So what I'm going to do is come over here and see. I've got this bin full of uh, different o-rings and I want one for the back here. Um, I'm going to see if one of these here will work. It looks like it might. And I'm going to probably want a littler one for the post. That one looks like it might work. So let's uh, see if I can get these where they go. So this post here that this goes on. Yeah, that one actually fits on there. I want I want an O-ring that'll fit over that, and then I want an O-ring that'll fit over this post. That'll work fine. Let's see if it's actually a little big to go into the hole there. So hopefully that'll stay on the outside and seal. We'll have to just see where it fits here. Um. This looks like yeah, it's got a little square post there, so this points up. I'm losing my light here for the day. And it's hard to see what I'm doing here. That catches. Yeah, that's pulling it in. Okay. Let's see where we're at. If this works, I'm going to pull that back off and put some Loctite on it. Yeah. And look. No more rattle. Awesome. That'll work. That makes that nice and steady there. A good deal. Um, get rid of one of the... Uh, really the only rattle on the bike um, it's an extremely solid bike other than that um, so good got rid of that and I was thinking that if I slid this up too that would additionally hold that and I've still got good coverage down below so um, we are st everything's still in tune um, I've got about 280 miles on this. Um, I'd have a lot more, but it's just been bitter cold. So it just hasn't worked out for me <laughs> in the last uh, couple of months here. But um, there are a few things there to uh, think about on your own bike. Or if you've got a side rusher, I, I love the look of the uh, big brake here on the front wheel. That's awesome. That's nice. In the headlight it's tucked in there very bright and uh, out of the way and I like the look of the uh, battery wrap there so um, good deal got a few things done today while it's while it's uh, cold outside hey uh, hope you can use those on your own bike and uh, thanks for watching